very warm welcome to everybody uh, afternoon time is rather uh, challenging time for most of us uh, because we've had a long day long morning and uh, the weather sometimes is not too conducive uh, but i will try to make the session as lively as possible for you and informative as well um i am very happy to note that most of you uh, stuck to time and were here we had to wait for a few people uh, which is never fair for those who come on time uh, it reminds me of what one sees in classrooms we enter a class and we say ah where are the others now this is not good you should have been all here those who have come have to listen to uh, the teacher sometimes speaking a little harshly uh, about the fact that children have not come back but uh, i often tell them afterwards those who were there should not be uh, given any sort of harsh words because they were there already so let's talk about those children who may not want to come to the class let's talk about those children who may come to class but every morning there is a fuss at home where they say we have a stomach ache i don't want to go to school i want a holiday let's talk about those children who leave school a few years after they have joined this is going to be the focus of my talk who are the children who are not in our system on till now who are the children who leave the system uh, because they don't find what we do interesting for them for um, many decades now almost eight we have had the education system to ourselves in the sense we have not uh, we can't blame any other country we have as indians run the education system but one of the things that the policy very vehemently talks about is that there are crores of children who are still not in our school and there are many others who <laughs> drop out actually friends i don't know what you would write in the chat box if i say they don't drop out we push them out would you agree those who have their cameras on can at least nod would you agree if i say that many children are pushed out of our system thank you for agreeing now this group that drops out is a large number in other words i just said drop out according to statistics but push out according to what the system does for them now when they leave the system sometimes we can catch them shortly after they have left and bring them back but at other times we cannot catch them and they are pushed out for life that is our worry when we are talking about inclusive education and we are talking about promoting quality education now having already achieved our enrollment rates they are very good in all the states from where you come there's a large group that's here today afternoon 275 of you and you will vouch with me and agree again when i say gone are the times when we used to say come children come to our schools we we need you in we used to go from home to home just asking parents to send their children this used to be one once upon a time now that situation is has improved we have worked very hard and we have brought children into our schools we have also ensured that there is one school at uh at least within 3 kilometers of where the child lives right school numbers have increased yet as i said right in the beginning we our concern is that all children do not stay in school 
and all children do not learn as well as others. Now, who are these children? The policy talks about what the previous policy had also talked about, that they are children who have certain disabilities. Yeah. Now, there are children whose parents have a different background than the majority of the children's parents. They come from certain tribal groups. They belong to backward communities. They believe and, ex and have faith in a religion which is not the majority religion in the, in, the, in the place where the school is. So the children from these homes and with this background are usually the ones we see who leave the system or who do not join the system. By system, I'm talking about our education, our schools, whether they are non-formal, whether they are formal, whether they are alternative schooling schools, whatever be the learning setting. Now, the question is, why is the government saying, why are are our legal act in the regular system. There must be some reason for that. Before I go into my details of the PPT that I have prepared, I want you to understand the reason behind why NCERT, NIOS, SCRTs, diet, all of us want to promote inclusive education. The reason is very simple. And the reason that I'm going to share with you now is based on what our research tells us. It's not my reasoning. It's not your reasoning. I'm going to collate for you in three points only. What global research is saying as regards teaching children together in one school or in a school. Research says that when children from diverse home backgrounds, diverse learning styles, diverse religious backgrounds, Diverse abilities study together. The performance of every child improves. I repeat, when that we handle diversity in a regular classroom and teach children from diverse backgrounds, diverse languages, diverse learning styles, Every child's performance improves. That's point number one. Point number two. When we, as teacher educators and as teachers, plan for these children together as a diverse group, we become better professionals. I repeat, when we plan inclusive classrooms, we become better teachers. We become better teacher educators. That's point number two, research is saying. The third thing research says is that when we teach children with diverse backgrounds in our schools, our societies become inclusive. Okay? Have you understood these three points? All of you? Would you like to say something at this juncture? I have given you the reason why the world over we are promoting inclusive education. You are right. Somebody has written that I believe that the mindset has to you're absolutely right. 
It has got to do with your attitudes. It's got to, to do with what we think about diversity. Do I think that if a girl in my class is sitting by another girl whose mother is a sex worker, it is not appropriate? Do I think like that? We have to ask us. Do I go, what somebody just said, do I go with the attitude that girls who come from such homes are dirty girls? are carrying bad thoughts and they will pollute my other children's mind. Do I believe that if a child is intellectually challenged, he should go into a school only for the intellectually challenged? Do I believe that if a child has visual impairment, he should go into a special school where only children with visual impairment are studying? If that is my belief and that is my attitude, all that NCRT has done, all that SCRT is doing, all that diet is focusing on will be not reaching out in the true spirit. We talk about differences among children. I want you to spend a few minutes writing about what you feel about diversity. What is your opinion about having diverse background children in your class? Be true to yourself. Do not try to say what is most appropriate. Ask yourself this question. Am I a believer on for inclusion? Ma'am has said that global research is pointing at these three important Ma'am has also told us that the world over, we are moving towards practicing inclusive education. It's not only the Indian government. It's not only 2016 RPWD Act in India. Legal Acts, SDG Goal, 4.5, all of them are international mandate, the legal acts, and our policy. Talk about teaching all children together. So I hope you have understood the reason behind focusing on inclusive education. I have also asked you one very important thing, and that is to look at your own difference. We point at a finger at a child and we say, children are different, ma'am. But we rarely look at our own thing. If we start looking at our own thinking, diversity is obvious in every class, but it is a challenging task for a teacher to adopt inclusive education. Absolutely right. I could not agree with you more. It is indeed challenging, especially in the first few days, especially considering that you have not been trained how to handle diversity. We should put more inclusivity, you are saying, yet. It is not so easy. I agree with all the chat box comments, and I'm so happy that you are actively sharing your views. That's the whole idea of a talk like this. It is not meant to fill your pots with knowledge that you can get on your own. The idea is to make you think, make you reflect, make you really understand the concept behind inclusion and why we should promote it. When people ask you, as a head teacher, when people ask you as a professor working in this area, when parents come and say, sir, this teacher in this school is spending too much time, too much time with the child with autism. She's not giving enough time to my child. I don't think that is the best way to proceed for uh, the school because slowly the time is limited. Slowly when she starts she continues to spend so much time with them, the performance of other children will drop. I agree with you, it is not easy. But discrimination that exists in our head needs to be cleaned first. 
then we will see how to make it less difficult. First and foremost, our common belief must exist. I have given you the rationale. I have given you the legal act uh, reference. When anything is legal, if we don't use it, we can be punished. Right? The legal act can uh, punish us. Similarly, we can be punished now if we do not choose the right software for a child who is visually challenged in your class. If we do not choose the right technology that he needs in the class, even though you may not be trained, because you are a teacher on, of the current times, you have to learn these skills. You have to adapt and adopt certain procedures which were not taught to you. So the social media, you know, is very active. Soon, parents are going to form very active groups. They will be active uh, people in the system who will point a finger at you and say, this teacher is not a teacher of all children. She is teaching only a few children. And there will be a case against you, looming large, asking you why you have not taken care of the needs of, for example, a child who is spastic. Now, no plea there can just be justified because you know that since 2016, we have the right of persons with disability act. According to this act, children with different kinds of disabilities and needs have the right to be in your class. And they can be coming into your class any time during the year. Okay? They can knock the door in September and say, I need admission. My father is a migrant from this place. We were moving from one place to another place because he's engaged in building roads. So every three months, I change my school because that is the nature of my father's work. Now, when the child comes in in the month of September and says, Mere ko admission do, you cannot say no because it is now the child's right to be in your class. That is the big difference that has taken place pre the NEP policy 2020. I'm talking of the period before that. This act was amalgamated in 2016. The policy came in 2020. And the policy has accepted in principle this act. It has endorsed this act. So when something is endorsed by the policy, what does it mean you understand? It means that you have adopted it. So now the act exists, the policy has accepted the act and therefore it is very serious concern of educationists that we must prepare teachers for teaching all children. You cannot leave any child behind. Every learner matters and matters equally. Now, just for a minute, think about what I am going to paint before you a scenario. There is a girl, she is born blind, okay? She goes to a special school, stays in the special school for nine years. During the summer holidays, she does not come back home because the home is very far from where the special school is. 
she goes and stays with an aunt in the same city and after the holidays she goes back to the special school in a few years her schooling ends she has completed class 12 she is very bright she has learned how to navigate she can navigate to any part using her white cane she has learned how to work on the computer she has made use of a lot of technology in her learning process and she is a confident young girl now after completing 12 she comes back home at home her mother and father go out to work every morning at home her sister who is 6 years younger to her goes to a regular school close by and her grandmother is the only one at home when she comes back the grandmother says what do i do with her i cannot look after my own needs when you are gone how do i look after her needs okay it's not that the grandmother doesn't love her the grandmother loves her equally but this is a natural question of the grandmother the grandmother goes to the temple every morning and she decides to take this girl with her on the way she realizes that though she is using her white cane she does not know that there are 20 stairs that go up to the temple something that all other children in the locality know very well so she holds her hand and says you come with me i will take you up the stairs when they are going up the stairs her puja tokri falls because she is not used to taking anybody with her this is one scenario in the evening the young sister comes back from home uh, from school and she is playing outside in the in the veranda other children from the neighborhood look at this girl and ask the sister who is she and why is she standing with her head slanting to the right and not talking to us her younger sister explains that she is my elder sister she was studying in dehradun she cannot see and now she has come to us to stay and will be with us some children become silent others become naughty and start calling her andhi andhi okay the sister whose name is renu feels very awkward and she goes back into the room sitting alone on the sofa she starts crying she is missing her other friends who were blind she decides not to let this gloomy environment pull her down she picks up a white cane white cane opens it and decides to go out in the market and explore just to alleviate her mood as she is crossing the stair the the uh, road people start shouting are dekho ek andhi ladki chali ja rahi isko bachao iske upar koi gaadi chal jayegi she tells them i can cross on my own i have been taught in school how to cross nobody listens to they drag her across the road and ask her where she lives and brings her back home her father scolds her for leaving home without telling anybody 
What am I trying to tell you? I am trying to tell you what happens when we take a child out of the system for too long and when we bring her back, what happens? The neighbors don't know her. The grandmother doesn't know how to have any interaction with her. The father just scolds. The society does not know that she can cross the road on her own. And that is what self-concept building has been done for her in the special school. Now, I hope you have understood my point. If children were in the same school and she had gone only for a short while in the special school to learn her braille, to learn mobility skills, to learn to use the computer, to learn using technology and come back in the regular school and come back home, this scenario would not have happened. Do you agree with me? Please nod if you do. Okay, I'm so glad that you do. So obviously, the answer is that we need to the sighted children to know what a blind child is like and the blind to know what a sighted child, how they learn and grow. Because in society, we have to live together. There are no separate roads for the blind. There is no separate trains for the blind. There are no separate buses for the blind. The blind have also to go to the same shop to buy their groceries, right? So when the world is one, we must teach them together as well. Because only then, as you rightly said, attitudes for each other and empathy for each other will get formed. Otherwise, we will not be empathetic. We will not be sensitive to their needs. We will only be calling them with names such as Surdas, Andha Ladki, and forget that they have a name as well. We often, when my session is introduced, I am told, uh, ma'am, aap CWS in bachu ke baare mein baat karenge. And I tell them, no, I will talk about your children, whose name is Parul, whose name is Rohit, whose name is Rahul. The first child does not see from the eyes. We forget this distinction. We forget the distinction between a child and a blind child. Every child is a child first. Every child likes to be naughty. Every child likes to eat a golgappa. Every child likes to eat a chocolate. Irrespective of which home background he comes from and what is his disability status. Let's not talk about them as objects. Yes, let's treat them as living beings. They are human and we need to care for them with equality in our eyes. We don't need to wear any lenses that make us distinguish them from each other. Because discrimination is not permissible for a teacher. For a teacher, every child is a learner. And a learner does not have a background. A learner comes to learn. Right? Now, if we don't know how to work with them, it is our problem. I am tackling a very important issue now. If all of you are saying in your chat box, the chat in the chat box, I'm seeing these comments that you it's a difficult task. I agree it is difficult. But then we have decided to be teachers. Yeah, we may not have taken an oath like a doctor, but we have decided to be a teacher. And if this child was your own child, what would you have done? Would you have thrown him out of the window? Would you have said, 
let somebody, some other teacher take care of him. No. I have never heard a mother say, let another mother look after him. But very often, I see teachers saying, let the special teacher teach him. I do not know how to teach him. Let me tell you, friends, we all know how to teach them. It is only an issue of attitude. As we have them in our class, we will realize that they are very expressive. They are very loving. They want to make friends just like other children. The only difference is if we treat their self-concept, we prepare them with a high self-concept and we keep their morale high. And we don't always tell them what they cannot do. We tell them what they can do. We have achieved a lot. I want you to focus on their abilities, not their disabilities. We all, all of us, the 282 people here with me, each one of us is not good in something. Okay? but very good in many things. What we are not good at, we are capable of hiding. And what we are very good at shows. But not everybody is so fortunate to be able to hide what they don't know. That is the difference between you, an able-bodied person, and a person whom we label as a disabled or a person with disability. Remember, our law also says person with disability. It doesn't say disabled person. The person first, then the disability. The child first, then his or her disability. That's the focus of my talk. And that's the change in your thinking that I want to bring about in the next few minutes that I have. This is the essence of inclusion, using positive terminology. If you have a child who is got low vision, okay, he takes the text too close to his eyes to read. I have a pamphlet with me which says Nishta. The child will bring it here to read Nishta. Other children will read it from a distance. Now, this child with low vision can be called a child with low vision, but we can also call him a child with remaining sight. Do you agree with me? Okay. I like the way now you learn to nod. <laughs> okay. What is the difference between low vision child and a child with the remaining sight? The clear difference is, you can put it in the chat box. The clear difference is, when you are focusing on the remaining sight, you are moving in the class thinking that there is something I can work on. Right? But if you are going with the label low vision, you are moving with the premise that he cannot see as well as others. And therefore, let me decrease the load of reading for him. Right? But that is not what the low vision child wants. The low vision child can read as well as any other child. His vision will not drop if he reads. These are myths that we carry. The only thing is that children will read a certain font size. This child may require a bigger font size. That's all. But apart from that, the color contrast. He may read better with a yellow background and black letters. White on black. Yeah, that's all. He may require 
a window which would help a page window in which there is a slit which he moves on the page so that he can focus on the lines easily. That's all he requires. He is as bright as any other child. So thinking of the child as a child with remaining vision is a positive way of including this child rather than thinking of him as a low vision. That is the use of positive technology that we are trying to promote when we are asking you to consider inclusive education as the way forward in education. It is inclusion is here to stay. Diversity in the classroom is going to stay, my friends. Your classrooms are diverse and they will become more and more diverse <coughs> as time goes by. Because cities, movement between cities is increasing. People are now traveling. So when they are traveling, you will have children from Madhya Pradesh coming to Maharashtra, bringing a language, bringing a culture, which is different. You will have in a place dialects and languages. Some languages becoming extinct now almost also. You as a teacher educator and a teacher have to ensure that such linguistic needs of children are taken care of. There could be 21 languages in one class also. And the teacher will be speaking only one language. So what can you do? Can you bring in a teacher who knows 21 languages? Yes or no? No. We cannot bring a teacher who knows 21 languages. We will have to change our pedagogy so that we can handle the language diversity. First, we must be conscious of the language the child is speaking. Very often, when we are speaking in a language you don't understand, suppose now I start speaking French. I can speak very fluent French. I learned it when I was a kid. Okay? You will say, what's happened, ma'am? You were speaking in such good English and I, we were understanding what happened. Are you trying to impress us? Okay, we are impressed by you. Please come back <laughs> and come back to English. We've understood you, no French, okay? But please, English may bad career. Now, do children say that? No. They never tell their teacher or rarely tell their teacher. They just sit there and listen to the teacher. And every day, they just sit and listen to the teacher. And then, one day, the bomb explodes. And they say, no, I'm not going to go to that school because all I have to do is listen to the teacher like this and I don't understand what she's saying. Can you imagine sitting still for a child who wants, his imagination is wandering all over. He's thinking of that lovely guava that is hanging on that tree when he was coming to the school. He's thinking of that cat which has just given kittens. And what are we doing? We are making him sit in, on the desk and look very serious. Like this. And if he doesn't look serious, we say, oh, you are a naughty boy. These are realities when I'm talking from the perspective of children. And these are the realities which we, in our enthusiasm to make curriculum, to make syllabi, to make textbooks forget. Let's remember, children are first children. Then anything else. And every child who is born on this planet can learn. I am not saying this. Research is saying this. That Every child born on this earth can learn. The learning style of children is what you need to 
understand and teach. How can I understand a child's learning style? Let me ask you this question. Have you ever given it a thought? I'm going to ask you to listen to five or six statements I'm going to make. Very carefully now. Okay? I am asking you, are you all learners? Very good. You're all nodding. Now, as adult learners, please tell me, if I ask you to complete a sentence, I learn slowly when. What will you write? Show me in your chat box. My statement I have given you is, you have to consider yourself as a learner. Okay? And you have to write, tell me, I learn slowly when. If it is not interesting, then I am upset. When I don't understand the content, then there is noise outside. When I don't like the teacher, when it is very hot, when I am distracted, when the matter is difficult. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just see how much I know about you in these two seconds that I have given you. I have come to know that some of you are affected by noise, some of you are affected by the content, some of you are disturbed when there is uh, a lot of uh, distractions outside the room where you are studying. These three things I did not know. Somebody is writing, when I'm hungry, you learn slowly. Okay? Children can be hungry too. Have you ever stopped and asked? These three seconds has told me so much about you. I'll give you some more statements. Just like I asked you, I learn slowly when. I'm going to ask you, I learn quickly when. Madam, the explanation, when I am a slow learner, okay? I'm saying, I, you have to feel that when I'm interested, you learn quickly when I enjoy the learning. When somebody's when I'm happy, when I'm joyful, when I love the teacher, when I'm happy again, when I'm interested. Now, hold on. When, when it is interactive, when somebody appreciates me, when I love the environment in which I am, when it is familiar, when it is done colorfully, when I can act, now you see how much I have learned from these, this small exercise about how I should teach my children. Suppose you were all my children. I would certainly bring in a role play. Because one of my learners learns well when the content is enacted, when it is attractive, when it's colorful. See, this is what I'm saying how you can make teaching interesting for yourself and learning for children interesting. But the catch is when you ask, just like I have done, I have taken account of what you are saying. Don't ask for the sake of asking. Roti sabzi. <laughs> okay. That's not good. Mat puchhe bachyo se. Kya khaoge? If you're going to give them roti sabzi. And that. And then the child says, Go, I want to eat gulab jamu. I want to eat jalebi. I want to eat laddu. And you say, Acha, thik hai. Ab chalo ye jaldi se khana khalo. What is this? The same thing should not happen in your class. If you are asking them about pedagogical issues, please learn to collate what every learner has said and teach accordingly. You don't need experts from outside. You know your children. You know your class. 
you know your culture. I don't know it as well as you do. I am not spending eight hours in your class. So if I tell you, this is the best way, that's wrong. I can only give you leads like this. But you will have to ask to know your learners better. So one of the principles of inclusive teaching is knowing how your children learn. Ask them these things. I learn slowly when, I learn quickly when. Learning from books is, if nine out of 10 children say, learning from textbooks is boring, then please close NCRT, close SCRT. Do not give them books for two weeks. Let's think of other ways of teaching them. Bring in books gradually. I'm not saying textbooks are not important, but I am saying what's important is your learner. What does the learner want? How can I mold what I have according to learner's needs? Why should I only think of a textbook and print material as a source of learning? Why can I not give an audio input to a child? You can also listen to a recording. You can also make a small videos of your, of your chapter. You can ask children to enact, like you said, I like when it is enacted. Right in the chat box, I was just seeing. So if you like acting, so do children. Can we not say today's lecture, I'm going to show on the smart board with some small videos of yours. That will make the chapter interesting. You see what I'm saying? You have to be the magician in your class. You have to think about your children and you have to find the ways within the means that exist. I know it is not a perfect world. I know you all have families. I know there is a lot of additional work, but teaching, if you don't teach properly, you are cheating your children. And do not cheat your children. Let's remember if there are 40 minutes in a period, it is 40 minutes of each child. So 60 into 40. How many minutes do you have? In thousands, right? So don't look at it as a 40 minute period. It is a thousand minute period. How you are going to tackle the thousand minutes is for you to think about, not for us to tell you. We can only give you leads. We can only tell you that the world over, we have realized that when we work on differences, we become better teachers. When we work with children who learn in different ways, we adapt our teaching to meet their needs. And when we do that, we certainly think out of the box. We third, certainly think of a puppet that can come and also evaluate. Evaluation does not have to be always written. You can just say, here is this puppet who is going to come today and ask you some questions. Are you ready to give an answer? In every household, there is an old socks. You wash two, pair, you wash two socks, one gets lost. Yeah? So take that one lost socks. Make a finger puppet and say, today, this puppet is going to ask you some questions. This is the level of adaptation that I'm asking. Think of different ways in which you can make assessment also accessible for every child. A child can write his answer like he has done for years. A child can give you a verbal response. A child can make a cartoon and express his answer, a child can enact his answer as well. This is how you will make learning interesting and children will not leave your classrooms to go to other classes uh, or drop out of school. So this is the essence of what I want to tell you 
I am now going to familiarize you in the next 25 minutes with the PPT that I will share with you and I will take you through the PPT. Yeah, so give me two minutes, reflect on what I have said, make some key points for yourself till I get my PPT uh, on the screen for you to see. It'll take about two minutes. But please, in these two minutes, I want you uh, to keep writing on the chat box. I'm going to look at all your chat comments in detail later on. Learning is known about, yeah, there, there are comments that you are writing. I encourage you to continue to write your thoughts in the chat box because very nice, ma'am. Oh, okay. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. I, it's always good for a teacher to know that you are enjoying. And thank you for that, that comment. Madam, you talk made me reflect on my class. Good. I'm glad that you are saying such things because this encourages us uh, to hope that every school will become inclusive one day very soon. Because we cannot let our children drop out. Uh, we cannot, oh, you found the session inspiring. The session is very nice. Your teaching style is good. Okay. Uh, productive. You are thanking me. Okay. I am reading all these comments. I am glad that you have uh, taken to this well. I, uh, I would like you, oh, you like the simplicity. You are also simple. We teachers are always simple. None of us are complicated. It's only that the task that we have uh, on hand is big. And sometimes we get overwhelmed. But I feel on the whole, we are all well-meaning people. Uh, my colleague Gulshan is now sharing the screen. I will take you through the slides. I want you to read them as adults later on, on your own. This is the topic that was assigned to me. I have tried to tell you about inclusion and about all equal and all different. This is a catch term that I like to use and I would like you to make your own catch terms like this. Next one, please. Uh, this is the nutshell what my PPT contains. This PPT, uh, I, what I've tried to give you is uh, an understanding of children with special needs. Who are they? How do we identify? Them? What are the salient characteristics of the right of persons with disabilities act? And what are the highlights of our policy related to technology and children with special needs? I have uh, included here, and also how do we promote the concept of inclusive education? Very often you hear the term universal design for learning. What is this approach and how can we apply it? My PPT will cover, and we will also talk about some digital initiatives that we have taken at NCRT to promote this. We will talk about how assistive technologies can support children with special needs. Uh, thank you for your comment, Nancy. Next slide, please. Uh, let's look at when we're looking at children with special needs. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, it's important that we remember, next slide, please, that children with special needs in our class will need some change in the curriculum. We'll need us to adapt our teaching methodology. It will require that we organize our classrooms better. Children with special needs are defined in the RPW Act. And children, thank you, ma'am. Very useful. You found my session. And I, I, I appreciate your comment, ma'am. Uh, children exhibiting ch challenging behaviors other than disabilities and interrupting your teaching are also included in the RPWD Act. You have also children who come from social, so SEDGs, socially, educationally disadvantaged groups. We need to look at them very carefully. And you will have children who have difficulty in accessing regular classrooms because of not just movement difficulties, but because they may be staying too far away from where the school is situated. So all these children, come under the group of children with special needs. The slide talks about this. The next slide, please. Uh, let's look at, 
uh, in the next few slides, I have talked about the right of persons with disability act and what are its salient characteristics. Next one, please. This landmark judgment came in 2016, I told you. It has 21 disabilities covered under this act and the act has defined persons with disability. That definition I've given to you here in blue. And also what is very important for you to remember is that one article in this act, article 40, tells us that we cannot now just do print and be ready for school. All the content should be available in audio, print, and electronic media, and must be in an accessible form. If you cannot do that, you are not being a teacher of current times. Persons with disabilities must have access to electronic media and providing audio descriptions, sign language interpretations, and closed captioning is part of now teaching learning material. Next slide, please. These are the 21 disabilities that are covered under the Act. You will notice that some of them do not have educational background of the child. For example, if there is Parkinson's disease, someone, that's also a, a disability covered in this Act. Now, that's for seniors. You will have next to Parkinson's in the next column, you have blood disorders such as hemophilia, thalassemia, and sickle cell anemia. Now you will say, ma'am, a child with sickle cell anemia, how is that child disabled? You're right, the child is not disabled. Yet, the child may miss school for 20 days in a stretch because the child will need blood transfusion. Now that means the child will have to lose uh, school days. And that means his learning gets interrupted. So all kinds of disabilities, including multiple disabilities, uh, 21 such disabilities, physical, intellectual, mental behavior, and those due to disability are covered. And there is also a category which says any other disability. So it's not like just 21. There could be some additional disabilities that the Act says we may not have thought of and may come up due to certain circumstances. Or that category, any other, is also uh, included here. What's important is that a child must be certified with these disabilities to avail all the facilities that the government schemes and provisions provide. Next one, please. What does the policy now say? How does it focus on digital technology? Two chapters in the entire policy are only focusing on technology and its importance. Digital technology is come a big way, is here to stay. There are no two opinions about it. How we use it, the, there are a number of clauses and articles in the policy which say that the best form of creating a conducive learning environment for all children is to prepare and you prepare yourself for using technology and use e-content and e-platforms uh, for teaching children. I have given you the clause numbers here. So when you are uh, using technology or asking someone to provide you the means so that you can use a technology with your children, you can quote these clauses. It's not only for your understanding. It will equip you to quote these when you are asking for provisions for children as well. Next one, please. Uh, they, all these things I have discussed already in detail with you. I'm just showing it in a slide so that when you are trained teachers, you have this material with you and you can use it also, uh, these slides carefully. So here I have talked about the SEDGs in greater detail and what the policy says and how are they broadly categorized. Please read it on your own. You have understood it very well. Next slide, please. 
this further gives you more detail about what the policy is saying and what uh, uh, the other organizations are going to do for you for you to be able to teach all children in school next one this for example talks about how we read uh, this whole concept of when we are trying to be fair and equitable what are the possible areas that the government has thought of to provide uh, equity in education there are fee waivers there are counseling facilities there are additional schools to be set up and there are interventions that they have talked about in the foundational years like you all said the attitudes are built in the early years and what could be some focus on special mechanisms for the tribal groups and for children who belong to other backward classes that is referred to and the focus has to be on the attainment of learning outcomes for all children including those who belong to sc st and tribal groups so this whole concept of equity has to be very clearly articulated in your head the teachers head and then steps taken how to practice it next one how is the issue of gender taken care of this is also uh, specified in this slide and you can look at it in greater detail next one how do, uh, do we explain the concept of inclusion to others i have specified in these next four or five slides please read them carefully on your own and i have explained them to you you will be able to follow them next one we have already talked about this article 17 uh, in uh, the rpwd uh, act talks about it it's a good question games and sports how do we involve children well para olympics have shown that children with special needs can do very well in sports they have performed better than the able bodied incidentally in the current olympics so how do we involve them is by first being convinced that all children can play all they require is certain adaptations and then you have to take the parents along with you and other sports persons who have worked with children with disabilities and then provide them training once they get started they can really do well let me tell you again uh, across the globe we have seen persons with disabilities have greater grit and determination to perform as compared to able body so once you give them a ball that makes sound and a bat that makes sound you can play cricket once they start playing cricket they will enjoy this game uh, and so will the other children they also find it very interesting to work with them. so next slide also talks about inclusion please look at the next slide yes this talks about who all are part of inclusion next one it explains the concept of equity and inclusion to you next equity what it is next one every learner matters and matters equally children who learn together learn to live together children who live together live to nurture an inclusive nation we discussed that so this is a slide which talks about this in detail i'm sure you can use it you can translate it in the language of your state and you can uh, use it in your training programs using the thoughts we have shared with you here and uh, adding your own next one this explains the concept of equality and equity to you and how inclusive classrooms provide equal learning opportunities to all children all students learn together in the same class i have shown you visually also next one this is a resource pack which unesco has just made it's called reaching out to all learners and it has very useful material it's downloadable free of cost 
and I encourage you to look into this to know more. Thank you. Next one. This is a moving, uh, this whole concept of inclusion. If you play it, uh, this slide, you will be able to tell very, uh, in a very interesting manner, you will be able to explain the concept of uh, inclusion, which means not changing the child, but changing the system so that every child can find a place there. And it is meant for all children. Next slide, please. This is uh, something that you must, uh, I'm glad that you are finding it. Thank you for uh, your comments uh, in the chat box. I want to show you this visual because it shows a happy child. Any classroom is, has learners who are learning and learning with ease only when they're happy. And that's something I don't want you to forget. So all for the children, next one, for all the children is what I want you to always remember. You can make your own piece, next one. Uh, key slides, she's happy with others. You are right, uh, Mr. Hassan. I'm so glad you have said that she's happy with others. She cannot be happy all by herself. Thank you. Next one. Let's look at some of the universal design principles in the next slides. Uh, you will be able to understand them on your own. I am going to run through them because I have eight minutes with you, but we have already discussed all this. And in the next eight minutes, I'm also going to talk about how we are going to design and implement uh, digital, digital initiatives, what we did at NCRT. All this is available on our NCRT website. And finally, I have also got some visuals for you where assistive technology is being used to support children with special needs. So uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Gulshan to just quickly go through these slides so that we just stop at them for only a few seconds. You can just familiarize yourself with them. Here I have explained very simply what is UDL and what is non-UDL and how one size does not fit all. That's what you need to remember. You need to remember that some children learn with pictures, others when material is read aloud, while others when they experiment. We have to respect all these three children in our class because that's what they are. They are different and they have unique learning styles as unique as their fingerprints. I am not saying this. This is what research-based evidence is giving you. So you have to remember that this is the most talked about approach to address diversity. And the more you read, the more you practice it, the more you will realize that this is the way forward. Next one, please. Yes, UDL minimizes barriers and maximizes the learning of each student. Next one. This are, are the, these are the three principles of UDL. I want you to think about it on your own. I have an, I've already explained this. Next one. These are, next one. Next, please. The, the, what is digital technology? What is accessibility and how can we bring it is what these two slides talk about. Next one, please. Next slide. What are the components of accessibility? That's something that we have discussed. Please read them, you will understand. Next one. These are some accessibility features that we understood when we were working on guidelines for developing e-content for children with special needs. Anything that is developed has to be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. What are these four principles? You, will, you can read and learn on your own. Next one. I know I am talking to adult learners who can really make sense of what is given to them. You know you will fully understand that the best of technology when given alone is of no use. So you have to have pedagogy, content, and technology all together. Only then it becomes really meaningful for children. The 
uh, e-content guidelines that are available on the ministry's website and CIT. Section 5 talks about accessibility digital textbooks. Those of you who are developing textbooks now must read this and must remember that they must prepare material that is born accessible. Don't need to retrofit it later. Make it born accessible for all children. Next one. These are the e-content guidelines that I've just talked about and I mentioned them earlier as well. Next one. These are some accessible digital chapters that we have developed at NCRT. You can browse our website and you will know much more about them. Next one. These are some other CIT digital technology, accessible digital technology content. Uh, you can find it under that heading for school curriculum. I am giving you the key to a big Jana. So use this key and look at these icons, explore, and you will learn much more. Next one. This is a series which we developed, and this is digitally available, 40 stories in uh, accessible format for all children. Please use these stories with children. These stories set the base for inclusion in the early years. What are these stories about? How are they accessible? I want you to explore with your children. Next one. Next slide, please. These are the characteristics of this excellent digital version of books that we have made. They are appearing in the best innovation that UNESCO is recording amongst them. It has become a rage during COVID. We would have our, our website was crashing because of the number of uh, children who were using it. Post-COVID also, these are very popular. They are accessible for all children. And we have put very simple uh, accessible features in these storybooks meant for young children. Next one. This is an introduction. Uh, each story has an audio description, audio video, audio video, small introduction, both regular and sign language. The idea is that we tell youngsters when they are young uh, in the formative period that signing is okay. It is also a language. Incidentally, today is International Sign Language Day, and I wish you all uh, this day as a day where you will look at sign language as a language that you and I also need to learn in order to make the world an inclusive place. Next one. This We have tried this uh, series out and then incorporated all the uh, features. This is just a snapshot of the tryout. Next one. I have also wanted to tell you about accessible textbooks. I've mentioned it. I want to reiterate that re reading is a basic right that must be available, made available to all children. You cannot deprive some children of this right. You need to make books that are accessible. Next one. This is what how we began our story here. You can see this on our website. If you look further, you will understand that we gave a video, a chapter, printed chapter in NCRT books. We made it UDL based by making a video with sign language, caption, visual, and sound. So this becomes a multimedia format for teaching a child. And the child has the option to look at this video, read the text, and in the next slide you will see, we also have, next one please, we have also audio recorded the lessons in two forms audio track with a highly dramatic story, audio track with fluent reading. So this is the way 
we at NCRT are exploring accessibility. I, I urge you in your states to look at this as an example and make your own explorations. Next one, please. The, I thought uh, the triangle that uh, you can access and see more about this on our website. Next one. These are some other accessibility in, uh, uh, forms. We have e Parshala digital textbooks. We have a mobile app. We have many sign language video programs. We have a tactile map book with audio programs. And you have audio books also on our website. Next one. Finally, friends, I will take you through in the next two or three minutes about how we can use certain low, middle, and high-tech assistive technology. Just look at the visuals, you will understand. Next one. What is assistive technology? I have given you a definition here, which UNESCO has given. You can use it in your training programs and emphasize that there is low-tech, mid-tech, and high-tech. Next one. This is, these are visuals. Next one. This one is low tech. You have a communication board, a pencil grip, an adapted switch, an electronic wheelchair, uh, some adaptations on the cells. Uh, you could use a head, head pointer. You have a communication board. Next one. All these are uh, available and should be used with children when they are in school. You can, if you cannot see your digits, you have a talking calculator. You have audio books, you have an adapted switch, you have an electric wheelchair, which can take you to any part of the school. And you can also move in the class, uh, just like other children. And you don't have to be stuck on one seat just because you're a wheelchair user. So you see how technology is bringing in mobility and flexibility for every learner. Next one. There are screen magnifiers, screen readers, text readers for many children. Next one. Next one. Now, with this, I have completed my talk. I have overshot my three, four minutes, but we started a little late. I hope you will use this PPT uh, in your uh, sessions when you are training uh, your teachers. Uh, uh, and we will be sharing this uh, PPT with you. Uh, if there are any questions which are pressing, I can take two. Because we started a little late. So two questions. But you can get back to me on my email. I shall be in touch with you. And I look forward to getting... Uh, responses from you. I will look into the chat box very carefully and respond to you if there are any questions which I have missed. Uh, yes, definitely we will use this all. Okay, thank you. That's a very good note. Uh, thank you very much for giving us insights on inclusive education so effectively. Okay. Uh, if there are any questions, I will really like to read your good comments, but if there are any questions, please do share. Ah, there is, yes, Dr. Uh, Bhushan is saying that's one. Oh, wonderful. PWD and CWSN. The P and C are different, and that makes all the difference. We usually talk about them. We don't say intellectually impaired now. Okay? We do not say deaf. We do not use terms such as dumb. These are out. We call them children with special needs. And the idea is anybody can have a special need. Right? So the need could be if I leave my pencil box at home, my need is I need a pencil, which somebody will have to lend me, or a pen. So similarly, you may have a learning need. That is how you have to look at special needs. So children with special needs are those who may have disabilities, may have parents who are fighting at home, 
may have maybe those who may have a calamity, natural calamity, or a human calamity, or they may be affected by, uh, they may be very sensitive to things that are happening around them, for example, war. How would a child in Gaza be? Think about it. Would he be a happy child with constant bombing and constant uh, visuals of loved one being lost? Yeah. So that is how you have to teach uh, uh, in the, these difficult times. You have to remember that children with special needs and they are persons with special needs who need your support in order to learn and be in society, maybe for a short while only. So that's what I would like to comment on your question. Is there one more question I can take if there is? Yes, we will share the PPT with you. There are no questions, uh, Dr. Gulshad tells me. I look forward to you reflecting on this PPT and the ideas I have shared. And you can uh, get in touch with me on my email. And I look forward to receiving your inputs. Thank you very much. Can the Russia's app reports be used in the person documentation? Yes, Russia's app is a screening tool. You can use the comments of the screening tool to talk about the characteristics of the children. Thank you. Thank you very much.